Hi, my name is Danny Backer, and I'd like to share with you some highlights of my Laurel and Hardy collection. I've been collecting Laurel and Hardy since I was five years old, and I've enjoyed every minute of it. Here's a set of dolls that were made of felt, produced in Italy in the 1930s. Uh, down here we have some unusual tin toys and paper toys and celluloid toys that all came out in the 1930s and 40s. And these particular pieces are very rare. They're from a company called La Isla in Spain. This is the only known Stan Laurel to exist of the long leg sparklers. Over here is a tin lithograph stroller. Uh, it was sort of a toy for dolls and depicting Laurel and Hardy from scenes from uh, Sons of the Desert and uh, some rare salt and pepper shakers and again some, some fans that came out in Spain and a couple of cardboard die cut figures. Down here we have a very rare set of decanters that came out in the 1930s in Italy and they're signed and numbered on the bottom. Right here we have a set of wood ski toys. Behind that is a very rare cube puzzle from Argentina actually in the 30s. It came from uh, France and it's got the original ball that came but it was sort of a target game as you can see from the 30s. This is a little set of dolls and toys that came from Stan Laurel's personal collection. Here you'll see some various production cells and drawings from the Walt Disney Studios in the 1930s. You also see some Hanna-Barbera production cells and drawings. Here they are meeting Scooby-Doo. Here is a, a set of paper dolls, fascinating, from 1932. You can see that someone saved these actually from a newspaper one week with Stan Laurel, the next week Oliver Hardy was there, and if you were really lucky, the week after that it was Loretta Young. I don't know who's got that, but I'm still looking for the person. Here's a very rare original piece. It's a window card from Pardon Us. This is a one-sheet poster for the film The Devil's Brother. This is a title card, a very rare lobby card from Laurel and Hardy's second talking feature, 1929. And this is a really rare example of a game called the Movie Moods Game. What's extra cool about this is that they made uh, some publicity shots of Laurel and Hardy playing with the game. Uh, up here is some artwork that hung in Stan Laurel's house. It's created by Babe London, who was also a comedian and actress. This is a, another art piece of artwork that Stan Laurel had framed and hung in his house. Here's another beautiful piece of artwork that was done for Stan Laurel by the actor named Don Barclay. It's an oil painting. Well, here's another nice mess you've gotten me into. And this is an original sign-up photo, the only commercial recording that they ever made, and this is an original record. Here's some letters. This is a, sort of a rare case. It comes from Stan Laurel Productions. Even more rare than a Stan Laurel letter is an Oliver Hardy letter. This one is to Walter Winchell, and it's uh, hand signed by Oliver Hardy on the very rare Oliver Hardy stationery. Interesting. On the bottom, another fan letter in 1958, uh, shortly after Oliver Hardy had passed away. And Stan thanks one of the fans for their kind words regarding his dear late partner, Oliver Hardy. I like that because it came with a little picture that he inscribed to the fan, but also a, uh, a little vignette sticker. But the thing in the middle here is, is actually a signed contract. This is from uh, 1942, from when they were working for the Fox Corporation. This is a signed check uh, that was signed by Stan Laurel. What's much rarer than that is the Oliver Hardy signed check. This is a uh, small pin here that was a uh, Hal Roach Studios badge. This was uh, from the estate of Ernie Murphy, who worked with Stan Laurel. He was Stan's secretary. Stan Laurel, best pocket-sized coat hanger, fully guaranteed, courtesy of Stan Laurel. And you open up the thing and... Up here is a fedora that came from Stan Laurel's estate. And this is from the Christie's uh, Stan Laurel estate sale. It's one of his bow ties, a fez that was worn by one of the extra actors in uh, Sons of the Desert. We are the sons of the desert, having the time of our life. A 
shirt that was worn by Stan Laurel in the film A Home Team We Will Go. This here is an actual costume suit that was worn by Oliver Hardy. Here's a suit that was worn by Stan Laurel in their last Hollywood feature, The Bullfighters in 1945. Pardon me, my good man, but would you move over and try to please? Thank you. Fellow bricklayers, have not Here's another great piece. This is a shirt that was worn by Stan Laurel in the film Bonnie Scotland. One of the really cool pieces in the collection, one of my favorites actually, is this pair of trousers that were worn by Oliver Hardy in their great film Way Out West. Well, you might ask, how do you know that, Dan? Well, I'll tell you. The most amazing thing is the identifying mark on these pants. There's a white sort of imperfection in the jeans material, and it actually, uh, in most of the shots in the film, you can see that same imperfection. <laughs> This is also a really fantastic piece. This was uh, originally made for the film A Chump at Oxford, and this is the actual painting that Laurel and Hardy squirt with seltzer. Say, Holly, what? I wonder who that old bastard is over there. Say, I bet you nickel I can hit him in the eye. I bet you can. Bet you. All right. <laughs> you missed. <laughs> Give me the bottle. Dime or nothing. All right, I'll give you a chance to get even. All right, now. The goatee and the cutout eye effect were later added for the film Who Killed Doc Robin in 1948. Great piece. Well, those are some of the prized items in my collection. Thanks for coming by and visit anytime. Bye.